Hello again, this is Ben with Studio on the Lake. Hey, this is going to be the final of the Ruddy Duck. And uh, I said at the beginning of this uh, that it was going to be four or five. Turned out to be three, so this one is the final. And here's here's uh, uh, just a quick recap of where it all started. These, these were ones that were done back in uh, uh, 01, 2001 down in Kosovo and uh, this 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 new one turns out somewhat similar to probably this one with a little bit of attitude in the head and I said I was gonna do the painting on it well I, to be honest when I started painting I was filming I started filming the initial and uh, then uh, the first part of the data card on the painting got corrupted and uh, I gave up uh, following that so throw that data card away that's the uh, number two in uh, two years and we'll try again but uh, he turned out real nice as you'll see here in just a second when I get done goofing around with these two and uh, this one goes into a little bit of work on the tail you saw how the stoning was done on them and that sort of thing so on the, the last video I showed you what the stoning will do uh, on that and uh, this is him just a quick one over the world to prove that uh, I'm actually doing these and this is how he came out so I, I like this I got a little bit of touch-up to do on it I got some antiquing that I'm gonna do on it but those those feathers on the body are not burned uh, the feathers on the tail all are burned and the ones on the head uh, are burned and stoned so in the duck beginner series uh, there you go he's painted with uh, Josonia acrylics and it, that is several washes probably three or four hours uh, in the painting uh, going over with light washes to get the colors that I that I wanted to get in there and get the transition and there's a little bit more I, I will go back and antique you can see a good detail on the tail feathers there And you can see uh, he's really kind of bright. It has nothing on it except the paint. And I will go back over and put a light, light uh, uh, antiquing washes, a dark, dark gray or a black, and I'll rub those on and rub those off, and, and then he'll be done. I might put a medium protective coat on there. But I like the way he turned out. He's small, uh, just like the ruddy ducks are, and he's got an attitude. So if you look at the front, there you can see that there the burning is only done on the outlines the rest of it is all done with a stone on the feathers and there's the the flow lines going through so this video is going to be uh, showing you the finished work on the tail and uh, then that will complete it so we're going to put a tail in there these tails have a tendency to chip and I, I don't know how to do how to fix this the the grain goes from the bottom of the tail to the top and you can see this one has uh, the right side broken off there and a couple of the tips the cats like to chew on these so I start off by by uh, taking a paper pattern and getting it to set up to which the one that I'm doing I'm going to put a V groove in the back of the tail there when I get done and this piece will be stuck into uh, the tail with epoxy and then if I have a couple of cracks, and this one I did, uh, the, the show up from the poor fitting on it, then I'll, I'll use quick wood and put that in there. So uh, I like the shape of that. It fits what I'm doing. Although on the on the original ruddies, if you look at the photos and references, this is this is not a, a competition decoy, and it's not accurate. It's it's a decorative uh, with a little bit of free license taken on it because I, I, I don't like the it looks goofy to me if you made him real to life his tail feathers would be sticking pretty much straight up and they'd be very pointed and, and uh, to see what I'm talking about I, I should have stuck a photo in there but there would be uh, oh heck 10 12 feathers and they'd stick straight up and they wouldn't be fanned out in this this shape so this is where I took a little license so I cut the blank the grain is running from the tail to the top uh, this one will have a tendency to chip like the other and then I put a groove in the back there and glued that in so uh, I won't take you through the pain of showing the glue in there and you can see that the tail is not carved down to match the easiest way to do this uh, is to, to do this before I stick it in so here I'm laying out the feathers 
and in the center of this you'll see one feather the full feather and then the feathers on the left and the right you'll only see part of them that's the full feather that's a partial feather underneath the other one and then as they fan out uh, you can see kind of what's going on here. So each one to the right and to the left will fan out behind that original feather. Now interestingly enough, and you probably figured this out, when you turn this thing around, and I won't take you through the pain of all that uh, on the carving, the back feathers will be the exact opposite of this one. The, the ones that are underneath the front feather will be on top of that front feather in the center. So when you, when you do the back of this, you get double the pleasure. You get to do both sides of this. And I, I left this fairly thick with the exception of the tips. Uh, to, so some of it someday will be in there. So the next thing I do is I go down and I relief uh, each feather. That's a saber burr in there. And you can see that it's green. It's fa fairly new because I haven't rubbed the color off of it. And that would be the, the first step on, on doing the tail feathers. And once again, this is a teaching video. Uh, if you just uh, tuned into the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, if it fits, fits, there's a lot of uh, tutorial uh, videos on the channel and then some goofy uh, off the wall stuff. But uh, this one, if you're thinking it's a little bit long or uh, too much detail, it's because this is a, a teaching video for folks that have asked that. So I'm going back with the, uh, the heavy duty burning pen and I'm, I'm putting or uh, delineating these feathers even further. So I'll go down and, and cut each feather back in into where it, uh, it lies on the fan there. And this is uh, two times or two and a half times actually I think the speed which because it burns a little bit slower than this. And I, I'm just cut undercutting uh, each feather just a little bit. And in a second, I'll come back with uh, a burr and fix that. So there's the f only feather on the front of this that you get to see the full, full feather. And in the middle of that, of course, will be a feather nib and then on the sides of these. And you, you can see I'm, I'm cutting back against that. So those, that's where they're gonna be cut out on the, on the tip and on the end. And you will get to see that uh, momentarily here. So uh, I haven't been doing a lot. I've been uh, back down in Iowa and uh, I'm down here again. Uh, last week I was back up home, but uh, the, the kids and the grandkids were all there for five of my six or seven, or, four of my six days that I had to do stuff so this was done uh, in those two days where I wasn't feeding grandkids and uh, and kids and, and visiting and that sort of stuff so uh, everybody's getting their shots on the COVID thing now and uh, people are starting to to show up again so we had a couple grandkids and, and the kids were up at the lake house the lake is starting to thaw uh, we got open open water and uh, the loons uh, are not back yet but uh, any any data I suspect uh, at the end of this six day seven day stretch when I get back up home in Wisconsin the loons will be there so now I'm taking that jeweler saw and I'm cutting at an angle uh, I'm doing the tips but I'm all, I'm cutting pretty deep in there to relief uh, these feathers I could do that with a, uh, a really small burr, but it would take a little bit longer than it, it does to, to do this. And this is two and a half times the speed. If you're uh, following along, you, you, I'm not really that fast with this thing. Uh, you should go over and check out what Jordy Johnson's doing. Uh, Just Carve Rob, obviously, uh, Mark the Maker, all the normal pimps in there. I haven't seen anything from Calvin Carves lately. He's, he's probably busy with school. What you see me doing with the pencil here is I'm laying out the uh, nibs in the middle. And you notice they're not going all the way to the bottom. They pick up somewhere towards the edge of this uh, because that, that is underneath. And you're really only getting about half a feather. And then as you get towards the tip of the feather, uh, you'll get the rest of the nib in there. And you can see 
as I flip that around. This has to be done one more time on the back uh, with the concept of uh, these are going to be set apart. So now I've got a ruby bit in there and I'm getting to the point where I'm getting ready to burn. So I'm contouring that front feather and it, it, it goes in kind of a V shape almost up to the nib that's in the middle of the feather. And uh, there on the right side, you can see that the, the, those don't go right about to there. So that they're not going all the way back in because you're only getting partial, uh, uh, partial feather out of that because the other one's laying in it. Most of these decoys and birds, when you're, when you're carving birds, you're really only getting the tip of a feather or the side of a feather because they're, they're layered like shingles on a roof. And uh, when you see a full feather, you, you notice that it has a different uh, gradation as it goes down into it and typically towards the bottom of the feather, the writing nib if you would, part of the nib if you would if you're into uh, pins, that part will be all fuzzy and that'll be the down uh, that's on the bottom of the, these ducks. So right here I'm, I'm just got a little bit of an angle on the burner and I'm cutting in the one side of the nib and you can see underneath my thumb there the the main feather has has both sides of the nib done it looks a little fat in this and I'm not real concerned about getting a hundred percent on this because I'm going to come back with a stone and take a lot of that uh, stuff away so there you go there's the second part of the nib and they fade down to practically nothing at the tip of the feather so I will come through and uh, burn each of these that this also could be done with a stone, uh, just as my technique, I have a tendency. And you see, I've got that thing laid down a little bit, so it's kind of burning and leaving the center sticking up. I can come back with a stone uh, later on and shape that nib the rest of the way if I want, because you'll notice that it, it looks kind of sloppy now. So now I've put a uh, little diamond ball in there and I'm going in the direction that the feather uh, would actually lie. And I'm actually running up against the nib, and this is in preparation uh, for burning. So you see I switched direction because that is a part of the feather that comes out. This does two things. It, uh, it does a partial on the, uh, the, the equivalent of stoning, and then at the same time it, it helps put little bumps in there that go in the right general direction. So when I burn, the burning pin will uh, go over those bumps and give it more of a realistic look. If you were to uh, sand the heck out of that center feather and make it perfect and, and make it real smooth and then burn perfect lines in there, it, it wouldn't look realistic, at least in my opinion it wouldn't look realistic. It, the feathers are not natural, naturally flat. They've got a little bit of an ebb and flow to them. And you can see in this one they, they, that I just finished up right there that it kind of does that. So probably uh, probably an hour burning this thing, hour and a half, maybe two. Heck, I don't know. I don't pay any attention. I sit out in the studio. I got the TV up in the corner with mindless TV on. And this is two and a half times the normal speed. And I'll start at the nib and then uh, bring that feather out. And this will get burned two or three passes and I'll, I'll put some what they call feather splits in there that's where uh, if you run you take a feather and you run your finger down it backwards you'll notice that it splits off into several different uh, uh, areas and has a little crack in it and then if you take and run your finger from the base to the tip that will repair itself and these these little feather barbs will all realign with the exception of a few and to make a bird look realistic, they have to have some of those feather splits in them. And uh, that's uh, kind of one of the secrets that's going on. Now you'll, you'll notice that I changed directions because obviously that feather on the bottom, even though it's sitting underneath that one next to it on the right, it, it gets burned in, a, in an opposite direction. Now I, I will turn this around and, and burn underneath that feather and finish it up. That's why you see kind of a light line between them. So there are, uh, there's two feathers going on that. And you can see kind of how I do that. I've got more lines in the feather up towards the uh, nib than I do out towards the tip. And you'll notice I am going in a general direction 
I didn't draw uh, lines on there, but certainly if you were doing a feather, you might want to, and you haven't done a whole lot of them, you might want to draw some lines in there so you can continue to, to keep track of, of what direction you're going. And then as usual, I'll come back on after the first pass and take that off with uh, uh, the brass brush. So there's the tail grooved, ready to go into the back, although the tail is not carved. Uh, yet I'll glue that in when I get those all burned up and then I'll carve uh, the tail a little bit and you can, you'll notice that I, I've really only done half of the duck there. I skipped ahead. I didn't figure you needed to see me uh, gluing that in there because that's a pretty straightforward process and now I'm removing a lot of the extra material on the tail. When they, when they flip their tail up like this, it gives them a, a little bump and again you can use references uh, depending upon the level. Uh, that you uh, want to go to. If you're doing a competition piece uh, where someone's going to judge the species of bird and the details on it, of course you want to have the really good reference material and make sure that you get the correct number of feather, tail feathers. These are not correct. The wings are not correct. Uh, and it's kind of an impression more so than, than anything else. So I'll come back in the bottom here, and I, you notice that I did stone that, and uh, this part right here, uh, it, was, it was quicker just to come back and, and put in some of the bigger feather transitions uh, with a burning pen. And you'll notice I put a little filler in there to make that uh, transition on the tail. And again, this is not 100% uh, accurate, it just makes for a nice nice flow and you can see there's the flow going up into the tail and the majority of this was not burned as you can see uh, I still have to do the side of the head and a little bit of stone work on the other side so he's pretty much done if you want to see how those side feathers are done go back and check out uh, the second video and I'll show you how I do the stoning on those I, I'm at this point I'm gonna go ahead and sign it prior to painting I highly recommend uh, you've heard me say this before if you subscribe or if you watch any other videos sign your work if you're if you went through the trouble to make it go ahead and and sign it whatever uh, uh, deal I just put my initials on here and then I do put the I put the year uh, that I made them I used to put the year and the month that I did these and I, I stopped putting the month on there and I just put the year on there so after you do this for 30 years uh, nobody wants to go month by month, but I will put the year and I I'll also take into put taken I'll take a pen After the fact and actually put my signature on the bottom of this That way a uh, hundred years from now if any of this survives and anyone's interested uh, Maybe one of the grandkids or great grand grandkids can uh, sell these uh, if, if I become famous and I'm not holding my breath on, on the famous part. Uh, there, there are people that collect the, my decoys. I do decoys for collections, uh, but they're, they're a little bit more realistic. So there he is all in all his glory. And uh, here's a little section. I, I talked about gesso and a couple people asked about the gesso. I didn't put a sealer on that. Now you can put a real light sealer on there and then put the gesso, but the gesso seems to work uh, just fine uh, by itself. Now what that gesso does, and that's an acrylic gesso, uh, it gives the, everything a base for the paint. If I were to go ahead and start painting this without sealing it, the acrylic paint, since it's water-based, would uh, want to sink in on the bird. And uh, it's just easier Okay, so what this what this gesso does is it provides a um, a base. If you're a painter or no a painter, canvases are prepped with gesso, and it gives it a nice uh, solid base for the paint to adhere to. Now on these birds, you need to be a little careful because <laughs> these are going to get one coat or two coats probably on this one and then uh, two very light coats and I, the idea is I don't want to take the burn and the stone marks 
and cover them up. This stuff will cover those up if you're not real careful. So I'm putting on a, a fairly thin coat of this and you don't see me uh, sticking it in the water there. But this is also the point where you can uh, you can look at the bird when you're all done and you'll see all the divots and all the stone marks and all the burn marks and all your transition areas when you get one or two coats of this on there. And you can sand this real lightly if you want to, the gesso. But uh, it, it will tell you what you're gonna end up with when you paint over it. If your lines are clear enough to paint. I know Just Carve Rob talks about burning because he has a paint uh, stop line. He'll burn the line in there and then uh, the paint uh, won't flow over. Kind of the same concept here. If, you, if you're not seeing what you want to see as you start to put the paint on there. Now this, what this will allow me to do, this will allow, will allow me to take very small water thin layers of the acrylic and, and paint them over and over again. And you can blend colors with this kind of like uh, like you would with oil painting if you're really careful with it. So this is this is kind of fun and uh, I, I ran this pretty quick but I wanted you to see what the end of this looks like and you can see the, the first coat doesn't quite cover the burn marks on that. The, the burn gets in there that's why it usually takes about two coats but once again you want to put on very thin coats so that you um, you don't obscure why, why go through the trouble of burning and stoning each of these feather marks and lines in if you're going to cover them up at the end and uh, that's one of the reasons that I, I don't typically use a sealer on this if I do if I did or do use a sealer it would be a really light thin shellac coat probably uh, uh, thin quite a bit with alcohol uh, just just to seal because I, I don't want to obscure all the work that I put into this and this, this is kind of neat when you get to the end and that's that's one of the reasons here's why we don't paint because you'd see I'd have to edit the heck out of this because I would be painting one section and it would look terrible until I added another section and then went around and uh, painting is, is just kind of a pain in the butt to, to watch I, I do promise one of these days I will will uh, paint but probably more along the lines of, of doing one particular section uh, like maybe I'll do a, a wing section and show you the difference between the burning and the stoning uh, where the feathers really truly lay over top of each other and flow and then they've got uh, some cuts in them and whatnot he looks kind of like a ghost duck now doesn't quite have the attitude. And you can see I've got a little bit of gesso on the end of those feathers and I, I will go back and, and take that off. But uh, this, this is one of the steps that, that I'll use if I'm gonna do some painting. It, does, it also saves you a little bit of paint because then the paint doesn't tend to, to soak into the wood. So there's a, a pretty good example. You, you can, as you look through those, you see each of the stone lines that I did on this guy uh, now. And when we get a little bit closer, and then as this stuff dries, it does shrink a little bit. So it will settle down into um, those lines. But to, in just a second here, uh, we're obviously coming up to the end of the video because I'm not going to show you uh, the painting on that. But you'll see how this stuff um, really shows you where, where your transition areas were. You remember we used a, we put an eyelid on this guy, or in this case two eyelids on this guy, with the quick wood. And this helps with the quick wood. It gives it the exact same texture for the paint to uh, flow over. And so if you've got an imperfection in the wood, uh, your gesso, when you put it over top of that, that will uh, make the paint have the exact same surface. Um, and you can you can get the effect that you want the, the next uh, project I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a hummingbird and then I'm gonna do a, a, a life-size owl I haven't decided if I'm doing a barn owl or a snow owl uh, and those will be in the in the bird series and uh, I, I've got a quick video that I'm gonna put out just a, a quick bird 
I, I'm not selling my stuff anymore on Etsy. It's, it's going to a gallery down in uh, Madison, and therefore I'll be putting those out, uh, pulling the stuff from the Etsy shop and then the gallery. So if you're interested in one of my pieces, just uh, shoot me a comment or an email. Uh, and the email is down in the description down there and uh, I, I'll have that pulled from the gallery and, and get it sent your way I'll let you know what the price of it is but uh, this guy is, will be going down there and like I said at the beginning he's going to get uh, a little bit of antiquing uh, done on him but uh, there you go that's how you do a ruddy duck from start to finish and uh, I, I hope this video uh, showed you a little bit of how things are done you can see there's a little bit of touch-up to do on, on the tail there and a couple touch-up pieces up around the, the face here but I like the way he turned out he's got a lot of attitude he turned out to be a little bit smaller than I wanted but uh, that's kind of nice if you're setting it on a shelf in the corner and their beaks really are that color but that's what you can do with just stoning and without the burning. So thanks a lot for watching. I uh, hope you subscribe, share with other folks. Thanks to Spend Ben with uh, Studio on the Lake.